Hello, everybody. Now we're going to see more about the end of slavery in America, in the United States of America. As you can see here, we have a map of the United States from 1854 with shaded regions indicating slave states. Free states and states open to slavery as a result of the Kansas-Nebraska Act of the same year. In the map, you have the part, or we have the part of the slave state. This is the green part and the pink part. This is the free states, almost 6,000 slaves. Okay. Slaves were bound to a life of servitude. Nat Turner led 70 other slaves to kill 55 white men, women, and children. Turner and his men went later captured and hanged. Slaves resisted in several ways. They tried to do a jump ground, escaping, slowing down of the job. Slaves also resisted by singing spiritual or religious folk songs that contain coded messages. Here we have some important aspects. The first one, before the American Civil War, Abraham Lincoln and other leaders of the anti-slavery Republican Party sought not to abolish slavery, but merely to stop its extinction into new territories and states in American West. The second one, in 1862, Congress and all the fugitive slave laws provided the slavery in the U.S. territories and authorized Lincoln to employ free slaves in the army. And the number three, on December 18, the 13th Amendment was officially adopted into the Constitution 246 years after the first ship load of Captain African landed at Jamestown, Virginia, and were bought as slaves. Also, here we have a timeline of slavery in America. In 1669, the first African slaves arrived in Virginia. In 1787, slavery is made illegal in the Northwest Territory, the U.S. Constitution states that Congress may not buy the slave trade until 1808. In 1793, a federal fugitive slave law is enacted, providing for the returning slaves who had escaped and crossed state lines. In 1808, Congress bans the importation of slaves from Africa. In 1820, the Missouri Compromise bans slavery north of the southern boundary of Missouri. In 1830, the slave population in the U.S. numbered more than 2 million, making the radio of the free to the slave American. In 1845, Texas enters the Union as a slave state. 1860, the slave population is now nearly 4 million. 1863, President Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring that all persons held as slaves within the Confederate States are and henceforward shall be free. And finally, in 1865, the Civil War ends and Lincoln assassinated. On June 19, the slavery in the United States ended when 250,000 slaves in Texas finally received the news that the Civil War had ended two months earlier. Then we have here the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, Abolition of Slavery. Passes by Congress on January 31st, 1865, and ratified on December 6th on the same year, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States and provides that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Reconstruction. The 13th Amendment in 1865 ended up slavery, and slavery's end made newfound freedom for African Americans. 
During the period of reconstruction, some 2,000 African Americans held government jobs. The Black family, the Black church, and education were central elements in the lives of post emancipation African Americans. Many African Americans lived in desperate rural poverty across the South in the decades following the Civil War. During the period of reconstruction, which lasted from 1865 to 1877, Congress passed and enforced laws that promoted civil and political rights for African Americans across the South. Most notable among the laws Congress passed were three amendments to the U.S. Constitution, the 13th Amendment in 1865 and that is slavery, the 14th Amendment 1868 warranted to African Americans the rights of American citizenship. And the 15th Amendment in 1870 warranted Black men the Constitution's right to vote. African Americans actively, actively took up the rights, opportunities, and responsibilities of citizenship during reconstruction. 700 African-American men served in elected public office, among them two United States Senators, and 14 members of the United States House of Representatives, another 1,300 African-American men and women held appointed government jobs. Also, we have a reconstruction education. Black church became centerpieces of African. African Americans desired for education found expressions in the establishment of schools at every level, from grade schools for basic education to the founding of the nation's first black college, such as Fisk University and Howard University. About faith, black church became centerpieces of African American culture and community not only as places of personal, spiritual renewal and communal worship, but also as centers of learning, socializing, and political organization. Black ministers were community leaders. Family. With the slavery's end, black women often preferred to be homemakers, but poverty pushed many black into the workplace. Family, church, and school became centers of black life after slavery. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed this 